Hey, I'm Levi, and I'm going to be building a 3D printer. I've built a 3D printer before, but it had one fatal flaw. The problem was that it used V-slot wheels. And the intent with these wheels is that they press into an aluminum extrusion, and they slide along here to constrain the motion of the printer. However, with my design, it was almost inevitable that the wheels would become untensioned and would introduce way too much slop into the system. Now the slop in the gantry made the printer practically unusable. And there was another problem, which was that the gantry itself was too heavy. The weight of the gantry meant that any movement in the y-axis would shake the whole machine. This is the first day of me working on my new printer design. I've learned from my mistakes, and this new design will only use linear rails with linear bearings as opposed to V-wheels. We'll also have a bigger build area where the previous printer was 200 millimeters cubed. This build area will be 300 millimeters cubed. That's 12 inches. Now with the linear rails, it will also have a very light gantry. This means that it should be able to move very, very quickly. The light gantry should mean that any movement in the X or Y doesn't really affect the center of mass. So the head can move quickly without actually uh, shaking the machine. So without further ado, I've got a lot of CAD work ahead of me, so I better get started. I just finished modeling the main frame here. There's kind of two gantries here, this being the x-axis gantry and this being the y-axis gantry. So each of these will be actuated by a stepper motor, which will be mounted on one of the corners. You can see how both of these being free to move, you can easily control the x and y position of the hot end. Now that I'm looking at this, it looks a lot bigger than I originally thought. The original intent was to build a printer with a build area of 300 millimeters cubed, but I think I might have enough frame material to make this 400 millimeters cubed. That'd be 16 by 16 by 16 inches, which is absolutely massive, probably more than anything I'd, I'd need it for, but still be fun. Now I need to add the Z axis, which will move the build plate up and down in the middle here and work on some of the finer details like how I'm going to mount these motors on the corner. I also need to figure out how I'm going to change these linear bearing blocks that are holding the X and Y shafts so that they can have a belt clamped onto them. The main frame is done, but there's still plenty more work to do. It's now the next day and after seven or eight-ish hours of CAD work, the design is finally finished. This is the finalized design. The X and Y axes are moved at the top of the machine. These two axes were designed to be as light as possible so that the extruder could move very quickly without changing the center of mass of the whole machine. This way the printer should be able to reach high speeds without the frame moving. The main frame from the machine is 2020 aluminum extrusion. And 8mm linear rods with 8mm linear bearings are used to constrain the motion of the machine. Since the X and Y axes are moved up at the top here, the bed has to move up to it. With this configuration, the home position will have the bed up at the top of the machine, and as the print continues, it will slowly move downwards. The primary problem with the previous 3D printer that I designed was its use of V-slot wheels. This new 3D printer design doesn't use any V-slot wheels whatsoever so as to avoid the previous mistakes. The other big problem with the previous printer design is that it had a very heavy gantry so that movements in the Y-axis would shake the machine. And again, this XY-axis design should remedy that. 
Once finished, the main frame of the 3D printer should be approximately 45 centimeters wide, 45 deep, and 55 tall. So overall, a very large machine. The build area will be approximately 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. The plan for this design is to use a V6 J-head extruder along with a Bowden drive system. I'm very happy with this design and I'm about ready to move on to the next steps. Now that the design is finalized, the next step is to start collecting all the pieces. This means ordering the parts I don't have, uh, making the parts that are custom, and cutting everything to length. For the custom parts, I have to CNC some aluminum bracketry, which will be out of two millimeter thick plate. I will also have to 3D print some blocks for holding the linear bearings, along with pieces to hold the linear rods. I will do my best to document this whole progress, but there's no guarantees. The first step of this process is now completed, and I'm ready to move on to the next. Bye.